A, B, and C are three events. The probabilities of these events occurring is given in the Venn diagram below. If it is given that the probability that at least one of the events will occur is 0 0.893, calculate the value of Y. The probability that none of the events will occur. Okay, so if it is given that the probability that at least one of the events would occur, then what is the probability that none of the events would occur? Okay, well, you could just say 1 minus 0 0.893, and that'll give us 0 0.107. Now, work out this one over here, which says, because remember, if all of we know that all of this here adds up to 1. All of that adds up to 1, everything. So if this stuff over here is 0 0.893, then this one would be 1 minus that, okay? Now it says, what is the value of x, the probability that all three events would occur? Well, this is easy because we know that all of these add up to 0 0.893. So you could just say 0 0.893 minus this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. And I'm gonna quickly go do that. So I'm gonna say 0 0.893 minus all of those. And that'll be 0 0.16. So that's 0 0.16. This question says, determine the probability that at least two of the events will take place. Well, what is at least two? At least two. That means two or more. So where are the places where two or more? Well, I know that this part here is when A and C are taking place together, so we'll include that. I know that this part here is when C and B are happening together, so we'll take that. I know that this part here is when A and B are taking place together, so we will include that. And we will also include when all three, because it said at least two. So it's two or more. So you would add all of those together, so that would be 0 0.15 plus 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2 plus x, which we calculated as 0 0.16, and this will give us 0 0.61. 0 0.61. The last one says, are events B and C independent? Justify your answer. Okay, so we've got a formula for independent, right? The independent formula goes like this. So if two events, let's call them B and C, are independent, then the following formula is true. P of A and B is the same, sorry, we said B and C, didn't we? B is equal to P of B multiplied by P of C. So this formula is only true if the events are independent. So we cannot say that they are equal right now because we don't know. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this as part number one and I'm going to look at this as part number two. I'm going to go find part number one. Then I'll go find part number two and I will see if these two things are equal. If they are, then I'll say they are independent. Now this is very easy, check this out. B and C, so where do B and C overlap? Or well, that would be all of this. I know some of you are like, yeah, but Kevin, that's also A. I know that, but they didn't say and not A. When they say B and C overlap, they're talking about those two parts over there, okay? So that's gonna be 0 0.2, plus whatever we got for x, which was 0 0.16, and that's gonna be 0 0.36. Okay, now we're gonna go do this. Now when they say p of b, they mean the whole of b. So that's the whole of b, okay? So that's gonna be, um, well, let's just quickly say here, uh, p of b would be 0 0.16 plus 0 0.1 plus 0 0.183 plus 0 0.2 and that's gonna be 0 0.643, 0 0.643. Then the P of C, so that's the whole of C, would be all of that, and so that's gonna be 0 0.16 plus 0 0.2 plus 0 0.05 plus 0 0.15, and that'll give us 0 0.56. We're then gonna multiply those two values together, and that'll give us 0 0.56. 3, 6. So these two values are equal, therefore, yes, 
They are independent. I've actually never, I've hardly ever seen a question where they're actually end up being independent. 